Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm very delighted to have uh, Professor Tekin Ozoeglu from Case Western Reserve University here. Um, so I met Tekin, uh, I think, 17 years ago uh, when I visited Case Western as a grad student uh, looking for a job. So uh, <coughs> both Miral, Miral was my, uh, uh, Professor Miral Ozoeglu is also here today, so I'm very delighted to have both. So Miral was my official host. So. I have a lot of memories of uh, those days. Uh, and uh, uh, Professor Ozogli uh, uh, has been a very senior uh, faculty member at Case Western and has been a contributor to our community for very many years. Um, he, is, uh, he did his PhD from University of Alberta, uh, Edmonton, and uh, his current research interests are around uh, databases, bioinformatics, and the web. So, uh, today I'm going to learn something that I don't know. Uh, I know nothing about, you know, the bioinformatics area broadly, so it would be an education for me. So, please. Thank you, Suresh. So, uh, this is uh, the group that worked on this. I shouldn't really take credit for everything. Ali is a PhD student of mine. He's uh, with us for about, uh, he's been with us for five years. Uh, he knows bi more biochemistry than I do. Uh, Arun is actually a master's student. He's finishing his degree. And he's going to start working at Microsoft at the end of August. Uh, and uh, this is me over here, and this is Merat. So what I'll talk about is, uh, is uh, metabolomic analysis. What is metabolomics? Uh, it's uh, essentially uh, metabolites are small, weight, uh, m small molecular weight molecules that are products of various different metabolism. And metabolomy refers to the complete set of metabolites uh, in, in different tissues or organs. Uh, the, the amount of metabolites, uh, you know, is, uh, you, can, you can get different numbers if you ask different people, but I would say around 2,500 of them. And metabolomics is the study of distributions of uh, metabolomy in biofluids. By that I mean blood, urine, etc. So the recent technology, uh, technological increase is mass spectrometry uh, and uh, gas uh, chromatography and so on uh, have actually enabled us to, have enabled biologists to measure uh, these small weight metabolites in biofluids, blood, urine, saliva, etc. So the question is, uh, when, uh, when you can measure these and when you know what the normal values are, and when they differ from normal values, what do they mean? Uh, so when you go and take a blood test, uh, you have about 20, 30 different measurements, and these are biomarkers, and some of them are metabolites. And you know what, uh, if a single metabolite has a higher value, such as, a, such as ketone in your urine, uh, you know that you have certain problems. The doctors know that. But the question is, when you have 300 of these metabolites that are lower or higher than the normal values, what type of problems do I have or what type of physiological is issues do I have? Or uh, maybe I, my dietary intake has issues, so I need to adjust them. So this is the question. What do they mean? Th there is no easy answer to this. The way in which this is done is actually our second, uh, second uh, the third author over here is a very well known world-class uh, biochemist, and he's actually, his specialty is metabolic biochemistry. Uh, he can close his eyes and tell you what happens if you start with metabolite in this organ and how it interacts and how it changes, loses its carbon bonds, how it uh, produces energy and so on. So he actually suggested this problem to us. Uh, and uh, you, the standard approach is you ask this biochemist and then he says, okay, well I know that uh, if you have alanine increase, arginine decrease, uh, glucose increase in the blood, it may mean one of these 10 different possibilities. Uh, so our task is uh, to do this computationally. Metabolic network itself is very complex and uh, uh, different metabolism have different uh, set of 
pathways, uh, connections. Uh, carbohydrate metabolism is a bunch of pathways that actually deal with carbohydrate consumption. Lipid metabolism is with lipids, you know, uh, nucleotide metabolism is with nucleotides. And altogether, uh, the number of uh, different pathways, path these are really specific functional units, you can view them as graphs in your body, in, in different organs uh, that do certain things. Uh, each one of these different metabolisms actually involve sophisticated, uh, really complex number of reactions. So the question is, if, uh, if we have this network available to us, which we do, for eight years now we have been actually building and managing metabolic network. It's on the web, it's used across the world by biologists. We built it with Microsoft technology, on the server side at least. On the client side we use Java. Uh, so we, we already have this net metabolic network. So what can you do with this metabolic network to help this qu question over here, this fundamental question over here, uh, this will become more and more Im important in the future uh, because essentially clinical doctors even cannot answer these questions. If you have 3,400, 200 of these increases and decreases in your blood and these measurements are becoming cheaper and cheaper, even uh, the devices are expensive, but once you get them, then the overall cost is very low, so it will be measured for lots of people uh, for various reasons. And then the question is, how can we learn from these and what do these different values mean? This is the question that we deal with. Obviously, the true approach should be the following. You have the whole meta metabolic network dynamics figured out through a, a perhaps a very large uh, differential equations, set of differential equations. And then you look at the steady state analysis of this, of this network. But this is, an, this is an incredible task. It cannot be done. It will not be done in our lifetime. Right now, the state of the art is that there are four or five reactions, and that there are thousands of reactions in a, in a metabolic network. Uh, you, can, you can model it. You can come up with a partial differential equation to analyze its behavior, but you cannot do more than, let's say, at most that I'm aware of is about 25 to 30 reactions. So, so you cannot use kinetics. You have to use something else. So, uh, so our goal is to automate the interpretation of uh, metabolomics data. And uh, for that, we will use our metabolic network database. Uh, and our metabolic network database actually has deficiencies. So we revised it. And then by learning from biochemists. Uh, this is our first goal. And if we can achieve this in the next three, four years, the next goal is to actually move forward and do more uh, along the lines of data mining along the lines of uh, doing computational things. Uh, one of the problems that we encounter these days is, you know, I have been using biochemistry for about seven or eight years, but even with that, I say something to my biochemist, to Richard Hansen, he's a great guy, he's an awesome guy, he says, that's stupid. Uh, so then we stop that and then we move on. So as we learn more, uh, then we will be able to actually understand and provide computational techniques to them. This approach that, we pro that I proposed over here, Richard Hansen for nine months said it cannot be done. And then when we did it, he said, oh, it's beautiful. Let's work more on it. Uh, so, so we keep working on it. Every week we get together, we try to improve it. So we would like to answer questions of the type, what may have led to the increase or decrease in the concentration of a metabolite? So the way in which these measurements are available is, uh, most of the time, is with respect to a control subject. Control subject is a normal person. And then uh, and there is this person uh, whose measurements are, they differ uh, from the control, control subject's measurements in, term of, in terms of the concentration levels of the metabolite. Uh, so are there any alternative hypotheses or scenarios? And we can produce this. Uh, are our results consistent? I will just define what I mean by that. And then can we uh, verify and score these different alternatives? The, the way in which we will define the hypothesis will be essentially a path uh, in a graph database uh, starting from blood measurement of a metabolite ending with the same blood measurement of another metabolite and then looking at increases and decreases. We will look at perturbation analysis. Uh, we, we, have no, we make no claims about steady state behavior of the system. We are just saying that if, you, if, if there is an increase of this metabolite, there, there is a temporary increase uh, perturbation in this metabolite and this metabolite in the organs. 
And you cannot do more than that. Uh, with humans, we are targeting this for humans, you cannot really look at the metabolite concentration levels in organs unless you put a clamp around the liver of a person and then squeeze it and then get the metabolites out. You can do it for mice uh, and unfortunately for dogs, but no more than that, yes. Well. Just to clarify this in a little bit, uh, you, you were talking about comparing this to the normal, normal, uh, normal yes. state of uh, a person. How much variation is there among individuals and uh, how much is sort of normal variation over time for a single individual? Is, is that understood? Or? That's not understood at all. Not at this stage. This is really, this is really the beginning of this technology. Uh, we are at the really forefront of the technology where it will be extremely important in, for nutritional purposes into the future. Uh, actually, we are also working with a metabolomist expert, Dr. Henri Brunengraber from Belgium. He's a well-known expert. And, uh, and, and this, 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 this information is uh, not available at this point in time. Uh, it, as we know more, and that it will be much more important. And we will relate uh, these increases and decreases to dietary problems, problems in specific organs, or to diseases. So I will, give an, I will start with an example. Let's say that in the blood, uh, not that we measure 200 or 300 of these, uh, but right, let's only start with five of them. Glutamine has increased. This is what you would do when you go to these exercise clubs. They say, we have protein shakes. I can give you glutamine, alanine, and so on, right? So it's one of those. Uh, glutamine has increased with respect to a normal person by fourfold. Alanine, uh, another metabolite, has increased by twofold. Urea has decreased by 0.5 fold. Glucose, blood glucose, has increased by 1.3 fold. And this stands for branch chain amino acids. These are shorter amino acids, uh, and it is a metabolite. It has not changed with respect to a normal person. What do they mean? So, uh, in the first place, if you start with glucose over here, you will not you will not go too far. But if you, go, if you start with glutamine, which is what we will do, you can actually start uh, 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 coming to some alternative uh, conclusions. These, we intend to keep them in our database to start with. It's a daunting task to do this for all the metabolites across all the organs, but this is what we intend to do eventually. But then after that, we will actually do a complete analysis, searching the network, looking at uh, possible implications. To start with, let's say glutamine may increase, and these are the four possible physiological conditions, problems. Uh, it may be a problem in the muscle because of increased protein turnover, uh, or it may be a liver problem. There may be an increased production of glutamine in uh, the liver because of the urea cycle, uh, which is another uh, pathway within the metabolic network. Uh, there may be a decreased uptake by kidney or by gut. Okay, so this is a hand-drawn figure. Uh, we, we are coming close to this, but ultimately well, we would like our system to produce these at different levels for, uh, for uh, biochemists and, for, and as for also, also, for, uh, uh, also for clinical researchers. So these are the five uh, uh, metabolites that, are, uh, that we just observed changes. And, uh, and this is a simplified uh, network. So, for instance, uh, you see over here that glutamine is, uh, from here it gets transported into kidney, and then these are actual paths. Uh, but then this is really a pathway over here, which, has, which I omitted, uh, because Richard Hansen said that that path is rarely uh, traversed, and it's rarely utilized for this specific glutamine interaction. So we have a simpler version of it. It's another pathway. It's another pathway you see over here. They are really subgraphs. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so we are going to essentially do perturbation analysis and chase the increases and decreases of these uh, metabolites in the blood backward and forward. It's not a forward chase. It's actually back forward and backward. We go in all directions. Uh, it will become clear what I mean uh, in a minute. So uh, the, the way in which we will do this is, uh, again, uh, we are following what Richard Hansen uh, told us that we should be doing. We are, uh, he said that when I, he does consult, consulting work for uh, metabolomic companies. This is big business. And uh, they, they measure these things. And then they say, uh, what, what kind of problems should there be for these measurements? Tell us. And he looks at them. And he says, the way I do it, I know that I have some patterns. Uh, 
if glutamine has increased, alanine decreased, and uh, I'm just making this up, uh, arginine has increased, then it, it's likely that these are the problems. Because he can close his eyes and go through these networks. I'm not kidding. It's, he's amazing. On the board, he immediately starts drawing reactions with all the catalyzing, with all the activators, inhibitors, and so on and so forth. So uh, he says that uh, we look at, I look at, I, I, I define a pattern as a set of metabolite changes that may be related to a physiological condition. So this is one metabolite change, ketones in urine. Uh, if you have relatives that have ke ketones, uh, we do. Uh, and uh, if you have relatives that have diabetes, you would immediately recognize this. Uh, uh, if you're not controlling your diabetes well, you will have ketones in your urine. These are actually short, uh, these are energy units. They are actually lovely. They are really needed for your body. But they are not good if they are uh, being excre uh, excreted by your body into your, uh, into your urine. That, may, that, that, that means that you have a problem. And, and also, if the blood, blood glucose is about 200 millig milligrams per deciliter, then it, in all likelihood you have diabetes. So this is a pattern, a simple pattern. This is known by doctors. Doctors actually look at these immediately and say, aha, this patient may have, may have diabetes. So this, this is what we will make use of that. Uh, in, in our problem. These four patterns actually are the patterns that he uh, told us, uh, which we discussed, right? Pattern P1 is glutamine increase, protein turnover, muscle, uh, liver problem with urea cycle, and kidney and gut problems. Uh, so the way in which we co computationally verify this is, is, is by chasing this. Uh, for instance, uh, let's start with this. Glutamine has increased in blood. Assuming that the transport mechanism is one-to-one, -one, in other words, uh, increase of this glutamine means that it was produced in the muscle more, and therefore it was excreted into the blood more. This, this is a very simplistic view of the transport mechanism, but this is what we will use. And this is what actually metabolomics researchers use at this point in time. Uh, they, are a reasonable, they form a reasonable large community. They have, every year they have a metabolomic conference, uh, metabolomics conference. <laughs> And, uh, and actually, we will present this work over there as well. Uh, so glutamine in blood has increased. It's because perhaps glutamine is, is increased in blood. And you see that glutamate, uh, another metabolite, uh, has increased. It's, pr it's produced more, and then it's, it's resulted in glutamine increase. And now following this, uh, glutamate, glutamate increase is because the branch chain amino acids have increased. And this immediately means that there was a protein turnover over here. This is the problem in, in muscle. Uh, so then obviously you can say, hey, why didn't you go through this path rather than this path? Uh, we didn't go through this path because uh, even though the, the kinetic models are not available through you know, years and years of biochemistry research, biochemists know that um, this is ammonia. Ammonia produces very little glutamine. The ammonia, ammonia amount in your, in your muscle is very small. Uh, whereas uh, uh, most glutamine production doesn't come from here, it comes from here. So this is an important observation. We will model that into our, into our system. So, uh, so essentially, this is actually also hand-drawn, but we actually produced this uh, uh, on the fly. Uh, glutamine has increased in blood. This means that there is an increase. There are four possible options. Perhaps uh, glutamine has increased in muscle. And then uh, this is caused because glutamate has increased in muscles. muscle. These are abbreviations for these uh, metabolites. And glutamate in uh, muscle has increased because branch chain amino acid has increased. And this is because uh, there was a protein turnover. But look at our original observations. Our, our original ob observations <laughs> said that branch chain amino acids have not increased. So this is a contradiction. So then that means that what we have observed cannot be because of protein turnover in muscle. This is exactly how we proceed. Uh, so, so then my conclusion is that this cannot have happened because uh, branch chain amino acids actually have not increased in the blood. So this path is actually, it can be eliminated. Uh, yeah. Isn't there some sort of noise and maybe a probabilistic interpretation might work better than just culling a whole branch from the tree hard like that? Uh, uh, no, they, they, I mean, uh, it's not really noise. Uh, it, 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 these, these paths are very well known. Uh, I mean noise in the sense that you say there is no change, but what does that mean? I mean, presumably there's 
presumably there's always some amount of change. So, so okay. All right, that, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, these the techniques, these high energy physics equipment, uh, mass spectrometry, and so on, actually use very sophisticated software tools. Uh, and actually, if you change the uh, the device that you use from that uses this technique versus this technique, like uh, move from mass spectrometry to gas chromatography, you will have variations in that. Yes, that's true. So from one device to another, they will be, they will vary slightly. But if you observe a fourfold increase, then uh, you know whatever noise there is in there, that uh, is uh, that's obviously ignorable. Is your an up arrow says either fourfold increase or not. Okay, or no, no. So, so what I observe over here. So the technique that I use is very blunt. This is the beginning, right? I don't use actual values because actual values you cannot use. Uh, I only say that at this point I measured in the blood glutamine increase. This is because immediately the glutamine has increased in muscle. I'm not saying that in another five minutes or uh, after a certain period of time, glutamine will still be high in the muscle. I guess I'm just trying to figure out how you define increase with respect to your raw measurements. Uh, how do you say that this increase, what's your definition? Okay, so I'm going to model the reactions. Uh, in other words, these reactions, uh, each reaction has an input and output, substrate and product, and actually if substrate increases, product also increases. I mean, you're starting with measurements from a mass spectrometer or something like that. Right. Only, only, in the, only, in, only in biofluids. These are, or, this is in an organ now, muscle. You cannot know, you cannot measure this. So therefore, that's why it's a limited uh, technique. This is, you cannot do any more than that, unless you, as I said, you get a clamp and then squeeze the muscle and then extract the metabolites that ooze. This is exactly what they do with to mice anyway, by doing, and then they measure them. Or you use cancer-related research, very, very disruptive research. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, so we have, uh, we can verify that pattern P1 is invalid uh, simply because I said this already. Uh, it should, it really implies, by following the network, it implies that BCAA, branch chain amino acids, uh, must have increased, but, uh, and then therefore they must have increased in the blood, but they did not, so therefore I eliminate this. Uh, on the other hand, the second path over here may be valid, it may be valid. We are not saying that it's valid. We are saying, we are only saying that it may be valid. So this path, glutamine in blood has increased, and it's because glutamine in liver has increased, and it's because ammonia has increased, and if ammonia increases, then uh, uh, there's something wrong in your urea cycle. Uh, so uh, this is what this, this whole thing that, that, that says that. So if you, let's take a look at this. In, uh, uh, glutamine has increased, uh, but you see that glutamine is produced by liver and released into the blood. Uh, and uh, glutamine increase uh, maybe because of NH3, uh, ammonia over here. And ammonia is actually consumed by the urea cycle. If the urea cycle doesn't consume ammonia, then there is an excess ammonia over here and it results in larger amounts of glutami glutamine and then therefore you've observed larger amounts of glutamine. Yeah. Just oh. to clarify, at this point in your work you are just sort of classifying increase or decrease That's actually worrying about the actual amounts. So right. The whole metabolomic society at this point only deals with uh, uh, for normal people and for uh, uh, with only increases and decreases. You can actually go to actual concentration values if you are doing cancer research and you can actually do you measure things uh, in cells obviously not on cancer patients. Uh, no, it actually, if you, look, if you are actually looking at cell, you can actually observe within a given cell uh, metabolite concentrations and pools. And then, then what, what they do, and they actually try to, some of them actually, they do dynamic analysis. They define, they, do, uh, they fit it to a set of differential equations, and then they pass judgment on the, on the basis of the fact that if you have a, a, a colon cancer, this colon cancer cell behaves this way to this drug and so on. But not, not for uh, regular patients. I mean, if you are getting your blood measurements, that's all you have. That's all you have, yes. Yeah, I don't, um, 
is there an abstract problem statement which can come out with which is independent of metaboloids but which you apply to metaboloids? Is there Okay, yeah, uh, you know, seven years ago when I started this, this is exactly what I asked uh, my genetics researchers. Uh, yeah, I, you can, I, can I can abstract it to you, I will abstract it to you. But whatever it is that I do will be very uh, faithful to the underlying biology. If it's not faithful, then you're faking yourself. Uh, I, I had a meeting with Richard Hansen, he's a great guy, and I, had, I, said this, I, I had this idea about an extension of this, and I said, I'm writing a grant proposal, busily right now, and he's a copy. I said, Richard, can we do this? And he looked at me, that's, that's, he said, that's BS. You should never go that way. They will immediately kill your proposal. The biochemist will kill your proposal. I threw it away right away. In other words, whatever abstractions that you have has to be extremely faithful. Also, you, you can't speak in naive terms, you know? When you have a reaction, you don't talk about an input to the reaction and an output to the reaction. You, are, you have to talk about a substrate to the reaction and a product to the reaction, activators and inhibitors and so on. Okay, so uh, moving on. So I actually, wait, well, okay, I think I'm going to go back. So this actually, so we, all we do is, given a possible uh, uh, set of hypotheses, we invalidate them and link them to physiological conditions. I think I need to go a little bit faster because the example is taking, it has taken half an hour. And, uh, and then we can, uh, we, those we cannot eliminate, they may be valid. We are not saying that they are valid, they may be valid. So I'm going to skip the third hypothesis. Actually, the third hypothesis that there's a problem in, uh, 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 this was, I think, uh, this was, uh, uh, this was gut, I think, uh, and then P4 is, must be kidney. You can invalidate them as well. You can eliminate them. Uh, so, so the approach is uh, automated ways of eliminating hypotheses from among lists of likely hypotheses, and we we managed to eliminate three of them, and one of them may be valid. And a broader approach is actually eliminate all hypotheses. Remember, I said that this is not a path that's taken frequently. In, 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 in your muscle, your muscle, has very, your muscle has very little ammonia, so therefore glutamine cannot have been produced in significant amounts in, uh, to, uh, through the ammonia. Uh, so therefore, that's a, that's a path that you need to take. But if you are sick, actually, if your body is under stress, your metabolic network is very flexible. It starts compensating, and it's not how it compensates is not understood. It is indeed possible that, well, ammonia is the wrong example, but some other path may be active, may become active because you are sick. So then all bets are off. Uh, so anyway, uh, the broader approach is to look at all hypotheses and provide them to the researchers. Uh, if you look at all hypotheses that are M valid, uh, with 300 measurements, you can go down to about 200 hypotheses, uh, which is still large. So let's take a look at the uh, abstraction. This is the abstraction now. Now we are there. This is a metabolite. Which this is an input to this reaction. Each reaction is, is catalyzed, controlled by an enzyme, which is a gene product. And then uh, it produces this uh, metabolite. So M2 is metabolized into M6. And if this has increased, <coughs> this has also increased. I'm sorry? M4. What did I say? M6. Oh, I'm sorry. M4. And M4 is a substrate or input to this reaction catalyzed by this enzyme, and then it produces M6. So you see that this these two reactions use the same substrate, same input, whereas uh, over here, or over here, this reaction uses two inputs, two substrates, and that they are called co -substrates. This is a simpler model. In, in reality, this enzyme over here is uh, controlled. The effectiveness of the enzyme is, is activated or inhibited by activators and inhibitors that complicates this model. We model them as well, but I'm not going to talk about it uh, in this talk. So the way in which we will talk is if it's, this is a river. Uh, so M2 is upstream to M6. And therefore, M6 is downstream to M2. I'm, I will uh, repetitively use this terminology. Uh, so this is, the, this is essentially a graph network, right? So uh, what we have observed are observed events. Uh, we say that this metabolite is observed, it's an observed event, uh, to have this uh, concentration level change, increased by x-fold, decreased by x-fold, or no change. Uh, this, is the o this is the only information that we use. And then, uh, so, so we, you can actually say that 
uh, two hours after, let's say this is an example, two hours after the treatment with a certain drug, the level of M4 has increased by twofold. The level of M5 has not changed. And, and now we are going to derive events in terms of changes, level changes of metabolites in organs, in tissues. Uh, so these cannot be measured. <coughs> and uh, at this point, we are not, they are not of interest to us. We only want to eventually validate or invalidate different hypotheses or different patterns. Uh, so um, essentially, we will drive events uh, using this reasoning. Uh, a, a metabolite, concentration of a metabolite may increase either in the blood or in the organs. It's because it's, mo it's produced more uh, because substrates were produced more. The inputs, uh, there were more uh, substrate, there were more um, uh, larger number of, larger amounts of uh, substrates that to, to, for the production of this metabolite. Or it's consumed less because it's less consumed less than its concentration level stays high. Okay, this is just one reasoning. Uh, or you can do the reverse reasoning over here. Uh, so, th so then you can, do a, you can do a cascading effect over here as well. Uh, if uh, M6 has increased, uh, then going backward, uh, because of this reaction, M4 has increased. Uh, this is a perturbation analysis, not a steady state behavior. And larger amounts of M4 is because M2 has increased. So I have a cascading effect over here of M2 over M6. So this is a cascading effect. Uh, and, uh, and then you can, uh, you can negate the increases and decreases. This is the reasoning. If a metabolite is observed to increase, it's either produced more or consumed less, right? That's all there is to it. There are no other options. Uh, so we model this in various different ways. Uh, I'm going to skip these. This is a formalization. I do have the paper. I sent the paper to Surajit. You're welcome to take a look at it. Uh, we submitted it. This is being reviewed by Journal of Computational uh, Bioinformatics. Uh, Computational Biology, I think. Uh, so so uh, perhaps this is an observed event. This is in the blood, but these are in an organ. So we chase these backward and forward. Uh, so if M4, let's say, uh, has increased by twofold, it may be that uh, M2 has increased, or it may be that uh, M2, uh, M, the production of M2 has increased, and then uh, the production of M5, which is a co-substrate to this, has decreased. If this, if this is decreased, uh, then this reaction did not use enough of M4. Both of these are needed. So therefore, it implies a parallel change. Uh, the M5, M5 has decreased, and therefore, M6 has decreased. These are your alternatives. Uh, so then also, you can incorporate dietary intake to this and physiological conditions. There are certain metabolites that our body does not provide. So they are taken externally through dietary intake. So we model them. Uh, essential amino acids are actually the metabolites that are not produced by our body. You have to take them uh, uh, as part of your diet. And then uh, also, as I, uh, I gave this as an example, if, if there is a physiological process, as a result of that, the, the metabolite concentration levels change, uh, such as protein turnover that I gave, I illustrated. So we capture these, but uh, forget this modeling over here. I'll give an example over here. Dietary intake uh, increases, so it's a produ it, it produces, it, produce, it has this produ production event. It produces more of tryptophan in blood, uh, and protein turnover increases alanine in muscle. So let's move on. Uh, you can also, uh, you can actually, uh, you, can, uh, you can model uh, additional external events in terms of physiological changes as well. If your calcium dietary intake uh, uh, increases, then, uh, then this results in an increase, uh, increase intake. So let's move these, uh, move on. Let's characterize what do we mean by conflict. Conflict is that if, uh, if I start with uh, an observed event, and then later on I follow metabolic pathway, I end up with uh, the conclusion that contradicts with this observation. Instead of decrease, I have an increase. Then that's a contradiction Then I need to stop at this point. This is uh, the characterization of uh, conflicts. Uh, so 
We can start with these observed events and chase them backward and forward and horizontally to, through the co-substrates uh, across the network. And I can, I can have a, a, a closure of all these events, right? And, and this is indeed what we do uh, with a smaller network at this point in time. We don't have the full network. And uh, uh, so this, we refer to this as the closure of an event. Uh, then, and then I can define the closure tree. If I start with this event, uh, let's say this metabolite has increased. And then uh, this second event is a child of event because it's a child of this parent event because it's derived from the parent event. So then I can define a closure tree. I actually, if, if you compute everything, then it's a closure tree. If you don't compute everything, which sometimes we cannot, then it's a hypothesis tree. It's incomplete. Uh, so, so to give you an example over here, uh, for this very simple uh, network over here, metabolic network, let's say that we have, M4, we have observed that M4 has increased by twofold. Uh, there's a type over here. Anyway, uh, so if you, uh, if you only look at this path over here, increase of M4 uh, is because M2 has increased. So it corresponds to this path over here, M M2 has increased. Increase of M2 is because M1 has increased. And then M1 can only increase, perhaps M1 is an essential amino acid. M1 can only increase because uh, of dietary intake. This symbol defines dietary intake, increase in dietary intake. So this is a valid, maybe valid uh, patch. On the other hand, uh, you can see the red ones over here uh, are the contradictions, and you can eliminate them from this completely. And this would give you uh, the closure tree for this specific subnetwork. So, uh, so we, the notion of a consistency is that in your closure tree, you don't have the same uh, metabolite observed in a contradicting manner. That's consistency. Minimality means that uh, you, you don't have your, in your closure tree the same metabolite uh, increasing in two different spots. So, so your closure tree is a minimal tree. So once you obtain this minimal uh, uh, consistent and minimal tree, then uh, from this, you can decide whether uh, uh, which paths are maybe valid, which parts are invalid. So uh, I will skip this because we are running out of time. Uh, so for this specific path over here, it's this one over here, and it's a dietary increase. So, um, so the problem statement is this. Given an organism, and we are only dealing with humans at this stage, and a set of observed events, we compute all uh, hypotheses. A hypothesis is from a root, is a root to leaf patch. Uh, I start with an observation. I end up with either uh, a dietary consistent dietary change or consistent physiological change, or a, a, a consistent another observed event. Uh, then essentially, the set of all of these hypotheses. If you find them, and we would like to rank them, and we would like to give them to the, to the, uh, to the biochemist or clinical researcher. This is the problem. Uh, formally, it's defined in the paper, so I'm sort of giving you the intuition. Of course, I have, along the way, I have taken liberties. The, the transport mechanism is not as simple as, as, as I have modeled, but this is what current metabolic researchers do. If your blood glucose is high, I immediately said that, what is this? Uh, in muscle, glucose has increased. We know that that's not the case, right? I mean, glucose is gated by insulin. Glucose transport process from blood to an organ is extremely complicated. It involves five or six different uh, types of cells uh, on your pancreas. Uh, it's, it, it, it involves four or five different mechanisms. but. Uh, modeling, so we cannot really model this, but I simply, uh, what we are proposing as the next stage of our development is actually define possible eventual conditions over here for glucose to be transported into a tissue. Uh, this we can do, and that's what we are planning to do next. Uh, our current transport uh, mechanism is essentially, if you observe an increase, then there's an increase in, the, in downstream or there's an increase upstream in related organs. So these details, I will skip that. Another issue that I already mentioned to you, uh, the dynamic analysis is called flux balance analysis in, in biochemistry. This is, a, uh, this is a very complex and difficult process. But through years and years of research in humans, 
as I said, uh, if, uh, if for the, the biochemists know, for instance, that if arginine uh, is, is, uh, is produced in a certain organ, arginine is consumed more into, uh, into, the, uh, into a urea rather than uh, through this reaction into a, a, into a, a guaninos, guaninodate acetate over here. So actually I can say that arginine consumption, metabolizing arginine, is more on this path rather than this path. The numbers are rather uh, arbitrary because it's not known. Uh, only a truly metabolic biochemistry specialist can really tell you something that's close to this, but it's rather arbitrary. The point here is that the, in my closure tree, I can actually rank these paths because of this knowledge. That, that, that this, this, the likelihood of this happening is more, the likelihood of this happening is less. So we incorporate this into our system. Uh, physiological conditions I will skip. Uh, we actually do, another thing that we do is expat-like analysis. Uh, we actually look at these different hypotheses and then if a, if a subpath occurs in these different hypotheses many times, many, many times, then we say that this is perhaps a more likely subpath. Can you, you make use of this? We give this to the bio, uh, biochemist. Uh, this we do at this point in time, so therefore we percolate these hypotheses up in possible hypothesis list uh, or m valid hypothesis list. So we do some summary analysis in that sense, but as I said, uh, Richard Hansen doesn't like this uh, at all. He says this doesn't make sense, but we do it anyway. Uh, so I will skip this. Uh, so this is a subpath that occurs frequently here, and then uh, as a result, we put it into our uh, hypothesis, interesting event set. I will skip all of these uh, and go to our experimental evaluation. We tested this for a certain disease, actually, for a, for a paper. Uh, in clinic, clinic, there's a researcher uh, and uh, and uh, we, we use his data and validated our approach, but his paper is not published. We're not allowed to discuss this. But essentially, uh, his data had uh, much more than 34 uh, metabolite measurements, but we only used 34 of them because our database is a prototype database at this stage because our original system that we managed for seven years does not have location information. We don't distinguish between organs. Uh, uh, so we had to produce a separate database for that. So therefore, we have a small number of uh, pathways. Uh, and the, the pathways that we have uh, altogether, I think we have 50 pathways right now. And uh, we have 28 pathways in, in this metabolism, amino acid metabolism. 11 pathways carbohydrate metabolism. 11 pathways in lipid metabolism. And this is what we use. And therefore, we use a smaller number of observations. Uh, and. Uh, and this is the data that we have used. We abstracted the actual increases with increases and decreases. This is real data, as I said. And with this data, uh, the number of hypotheses, remember that we go backward and forward. At any node, we go backward and forward, backward and forward. Uh, so the number of hypotheses with our 50 pathways uh, went up to 130,000 different hypotheses. We eliminated uh, the invalid ones, uh, the invalid ones, uh, uh, stayed up at about uh, 3,000. Uh, but then, 30, I'm sorry, 30,000. 30,000, 30, 30, yeah, 30,000. Uh, and uh, the maximum hypothesis length was 70. And then 70, when, I showed, when we showed this uh, to Richard Hansen, Richard Hansen said this is totally useless. Uh, hypothesis length of 70 is incomprehensible even to the expert biochemists, metabolic experts. Uh, yeah. So we have to do something better. Uh, so this describes how we eliminate it in different types of metabolism. Uh, but uh, we, um, uh, the number of uh, using the observations that, the, that we had, remember the observations, the patterns, uh, we achieved 95% reduction with 40 measured metabolites. And then we increase the metabolite. When we increase the metabolites to 80 metabolites, uh, we eliminated about 99.9 percent .9 of the hypothesis. Down to we went down to 300 hypotheses. But th these 300 hypotheses is too much as well. Uh, I mean, it's humanly not possible to interpret 300 hypotheses. The goal is to take it down to, let's say, somewhere 20. You know, top top k where k is 20 or something, so that they can interpret these. And that's what we want to do. And I think we can do it if we can model the patterns more and more. Uh, 
so um, when we use summarization, I said these are expat like, like uh, subpaths in metabolite, the metabolic network. Uh, we actually reduced uh, uh, the, uh, the total number of hypotheses by 99%, even with 34 uh, uh, metabolite observations. Uh, so um, I will skip this. Uh, as I said, well, this shouldn't have been here. I'll skip this. Sorry about that. We used it actually for, uh, for this specific. The data came from that. Uh, so this is our system. This system is actually a revised version of our system that's used, uh, uh, it's a production system. This is a development system. Uh, it's at this site, this is our development server. Uh, so uh, these are the pathways, processes, and you can browse them and so on. Our current system does that. The new part that we built for this research is this consequence prediction. So uh, you c users can upload their observations as an XML file. Uh, there's a sample over here that they can use, actually. You can, we have a sample, we provide a sample. And then uh, they may actually, or they may manually increase, add, add whatever, whatever they observed one by one. And then when they do that, uh, uh, then, uh, and, and also we use Ajax technology over here. We actually provide what's available instead of all the metabolites. There are, there are 2,500 metabolites. And then we, we may actually specify them one by one in a, in a specific organ. So this is, let's say, after uploading it, this is what you we have, uh, what's uploaded by the user. These are the metabolites. These are the actual changes. And then uh, you can choose whichever one to be your closure tree for uh, exploratory query. I have 10 minutes, slightly less than 10 minutes, moving up. Uh, and then uh, when you click Generate Observation Supported Hypothesis, it produces this. Uh, you can save them. These are, st these are actually, these are our paths starting in uh, with glycolate in blood, glycolate in liver, collate, collate, glycolate, biosynthesis in liver, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is what Richard Dawson says, useless sparting of pathways. Uh, and then we visualize our system. Uh, we, this is also available. You can zoom in, zoom out, and then do lots of things. This is a, this is a revision of our visualization in, in biological uh, pathways. Uh, this, we actually, this, this is a new addition to our current system. It's, it's being worked out. Uh, as I said, all the metabolic network data sources on the web, highly respected wine cake, we are licensed to use their cake data. They never distinguish between liver and muscle, because, and they have to distinguish between liver and muscle, because the same, you see that you, you, this reaction over here, this pathway occurs in liver, blood, and muscle. It, uh, and there are other pathways as well. So we measure, visualize this. And then we do the consequence prediction with this tool. Uh, what, have, what have we done? We have actually uh, modeled the observed uh, measured metabolite changes. We, we chase them in the metabolic network across different organs using a rather simple transport mechanism. And then we, even with that, we managed to eliminate a significant amount of hypothesis. Uh, and, uh, and we have also, as I said, remember 0.9 and 0.1. This path is more favorable than this path. That's actually called flux ratio analysis. So we incorporated flux ratio. Uh, the limitation of the system, of course, it does not use, utilize the exact amounts. But util utilizing exact amounts is only possible with full kinetics. And full kinetics it will not be, I don't think, will not be discovered in our lifetimes. Um, so I think I would like to stop here rather than say more things and then maybe answer your questions. Yeah, yeah. Are there any um, competitive systems that are doing this kind of metabolic pathway analysis? Absolutely not. We are the first. Uh, uh, all the companies, professional companies, actually this, this company, Metabolon, com I think, the, the minute they learned uh, that we are doing this, they said, can you do this for us? Give us all the paths uh, between two metabolites in different organs, uh, and we'll pay you. We haven't pa paid attention to it. but this. Mapping these metabolites to the network is not done yet. Uh, all the analysis that we have done is extremely new. There are five or six web-based data sources for metabolomics research, and there is one highly respectable one in my alma mater, Al University of Alberta. They, they are funded by $35 million from Canada, and they, on the site they say that they have pattern information. If you have these and these observations, then it's probably this disease. And it's actually FTP will downloadable. We downloaded their data. But it's pattern-based. They're not doing network analysis. 
Nothing. Nothing. But I can use those patterns in my system. And then I can actually do more. Of course, this is just the beginning, right? I mean, into the future, you, you have to do data mining. You're saying that this path is 0 0.9 and 0 0.1 is, is something that we, I invented. Uh, no one knows. Uh, they, but my, uh, my co-researcher, Richard Hansen, says that you know the amount of ammonia in, the, in your muscle. It's minuscule. Uh, so he, only he knows it. And he's a world-class expert in this area. Mirai, you have something? Can I just add something? I think this is motivated by the fact that uh, it's very easy to measure so many metabolites in a simple blood test in the lab. Yeah. But then nobody knows what to do with all this data. Yeah. And there are very few experts, apparently, who can interpret this data. Yeah. So this is, motivation for this is a tool to maybe capture some of these knowledge of these experts yeah. and help people to sort out and eliminate uh, or filter out the alternatives. Uh, there will be, of course, lots of false positives in the results of this. Yeah. But the idea is just to limit the uh, scope so that maybe there will be meaningful conclusions. We can see, though, why 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 Hanson would want to see relatively short paths because yeah. if you can't under I mean, this is, as you say, this is such early stage stuff. Nobody's yes. going to trust the computer's analysis and just go true. off and, and do what it says. So if, he, no, 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 if no. it isn't. If it isn't a line of logic, exactly. you can really understand exactly. like, what's the point. No, but, but see, the idea is that, you know, on one hand, you can't do anything with it because you don't know what to do. On the other hand, you have a maybe smaller scope. And as there are more data uh, embedded into this system, it will pr produce better results. But this is a very early stage of, of the data. Our cancer researchers, we have a cancer center. They are funded by another $50 million a, 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 over five years. Our cancer researchers went crazy on this. Our, our cancer researchers really went crazy on this. They said, we c actually, uh, cancer changes the metabolic networks in completely unexpected ways. They say, can I do what if type of queries over here? This path that's not insignificant be suddenly becomes insignificant. You are a cancer patient, suddenly your uh, muscles are collecting uh, ammonia because you have cancer. So what does it mean? How can I fix this? So this can be used for cancer, but we are way early for that, maybe in another 10 years. Well, this, as you said, this is, this is sort of early days. And, and the question I have is, the level of modeling that you're currently doing, the level of analysis you're doing, are you beginning already to get useful results? Can you narrow it down to right. sufficiently small so, number of hypotheses? Right. Right. So, so, so th there is one example that we did all the experiments, and then we said we cannot. We were we were told we are told not we cannot use it. Uh, the, there is a certain disease, uh, and there is a researcher uh, in clinical clinic. His results, his observations, his conclusions, we produce them. Once we have them as patterns, we produce them. Among those, among those 300 uh, hypotheses, we percolate to the top his observations. But, but we can't do more than that, right? Ultimately, it has to be interpreted by someone who's an expert. He, he's studying a fatty liver disease. Well, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right, anyway. No, but my, my point, the reason I was asking this was, was basically is uh, the way you're the, the research that you are now at, what stage is it? Is it at the stage where it's beginning already to produce sort of useful results? Or right. So, much more so we are cooperating with uh, Andre Brunengraber. He is doing cancer research, colon cancer research. He is in the Department of Nutrition, uh, and he is, uh, he is a very well-known metabolomics researcher. So we are trying to match our system with its producing results consistent with what he has with the uh, colon cancer cells. We just got the data, and we are working on that. But the one that we verified is the one that Maya said. We literally found the right ones. Uh, you had a question? Can you take the output then and just say, um, you know, if, if I just had these two additional tests, I could you know, reduce the output a lot more? Uh, and, no, I mean, we really use all 34. Uh, yeah, if you had Tests to run. Predict you know, to additional tests. Sure. Right, right. In other words, uh, uh, that's a good extension. The, the, uh, the other extension. Point, we can, but it can be done. It can be done. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, the goal is this. Uh, you know that when you when you look at cholesterol, I think we need to stop in right. 
uh, ultimately, you know that in your, when your cholesterol level is high in your blood, that's a biomarker. Then the doctor immediately says, ah, oh, you better have uh, change your dietary intake. You, you are immune to heart disease. What we would like to do with this is, oh, I have this pattern of 12 of these metabolites. This is deadly. You may have this disease. Or you may have these physiological issues. So you start watching out. So in other words, we would like to make a biomarker out of not just a single observation. This is what current technology is. We would like to make a biomarker out of a pattern of, uh, and we would like to it, locate them first ourselves and then have them verified in a lab environment. This cannot be done without a system like this. So I'll ask in one fashion the another question, which is, I mean, in terms of using this from a CS perspective, were there any tools that you found well, you know, these tools don't cut it for you, or are there any so-called horizontal techniques that were particularly, uh, you know, fell short of what you have done, or you thought, well, you know, we use, use, okay, so we found out that uh, we, we manage not the system, but the original system. We manage it at a professional level. We use version control, CVS, we use Bugzilla. Every week we get together with 10 ma master PhD students. We fix the bugs, and then our co researchers, uh, Richard Hansen and the others, come. Not Richard Hansen, the others come. And then, uh, and then we, we fix this. But we found out that at the server side, SQL Server works really well. We have no problem with that. We keep changing the database though. It's amazing. Continuously we change it. And then as we change, we have to change the code. Uh, that net technology, what, it's perfectly OK. In terms of the techniques, I, I think it's, these are essentially down at heart. These are graph databases. We, so, so there are, uh, there are certain, uh, I haven't really described everything. If, we, if you increase this, which we did, into instead of 50 pathways into about 70 pathways, our system, even though if, if it, it runs in continuously in main memory, on the server, 16 gig main memory, highly powerful servers, they cannot stop. They cannot finish the closure tree computations. So we will have to use original indexing techniques. We are looking into that. Uh, even with only main memory computations, it has this system, because it's not just chasing forward in the network. Go forward, backward, backward, backward. Go forward, backward, backward, backward. So at each step, when you move, move backward, then these are all possible hypotheses. How big is this graph? How big is this graph? Uh, the, uh, the full known metabolic network by CAG has about, uh, it's on the web, uh, right now, uh, I'm sorry? Are you using all of it? No, 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 we are not using all of it because CAG doesn't have location information. All, uh, what they say, you give you a pathway and says, you cannot tell whether this part is in this organ or this, it's completely in this organ. Actually, you can take a pathway, <laughs> liver to kidney, some reactions you miss. So we will have to collect all that information from the literature. We only have done a limited work. Is this, uh, the number of pathways altogether across all the metabolisms, the cake right now has about 140 pathways. The largest one has 150 reactions. Uh, uh, and they have it across all organisms. And we, we have it, we make it available on the system. If you, pa if you type path case, you will reach our production system. And, and we built that over seven, uh, over seven, eight years, uh, path case, right? I, mean, I just want to know how many nodes, how many edges. Uh, so uh, we have it at the, in the first page. I think we have about, I think we have about uh, 25,000 metabolites in that full network. I mean, I don't know the exact number. It's listed. It keeps changing. Every three months, we download a new version. We up change it into change our database. So the last question I had about horizontal side is to what is going to be supervised learning? Uh, we, we don't use any supervised learning over here. Around this, uh, okay, so, so, uh, so this is, uh, uh, there's not much to do in terms of uh, yeah, machine there learning. Observations like at some point. Right. Into the future, yeah, 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 into the future. We, around path case, we, we, we did work on protein annotation, protein network annotation. Uh, we published it in Recom and ISMB. Uh, protein annotation, we use machine learning, supervised learning. Uh, and, uh, and we had extensive, probabilistic models. This research is just in its infancy. Uh, but I'm hoping that 
Once I understand it long enough, next semester I will sit and take a biochemistry course. Uh, literally, I mean, seven years I've been working on it, but next semester I'll sit down and take that biochemistry course, two of them. Grapes or no, <laughs> my, I, I cannot handle that. I will, I will audit it. I will audit it. So any, anyway, once I learn it more, you know, the main one of the issues is I'm too aggressive, right? I say, can we do this? And it says, you are wrong. But sometimes it's actually those, if you do it, if you do it, then it appreciates it, it changes mind. So I think that the, the problem with communicating with biologists, we found, geneticists, uh, biochemists, we found out is that the ones that we deal with are really experts. They are, uh, they are not at the same computational thinking level that we are. On the other hand, we can go off base and do stupid things as well. Great. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you.